Hello. So there's a few things I want to discuss around the Paris attacks. Um, I hope the volume is okay on this. I've uh, a number of people have raised that issue on my videos that the volume level isn't great. Well, I've reviewed my settings and tried to fix what I can um, based on what I can see in the computer. So hopefully it will be a little bit better. Um, it may not be ideal, but as long as it's audible, as long as people can hear it, that's the main thing. Um, so there's just been a minute's silence across Europe for this attack. Um, the poll still stands at 129, but I imagine that will rise with a large number of people seriously wounded. Um, there's a number of issues I want to cover in this video, um, so I'll just kind of go through them one by one. Because I think they're all um, issues that are worth talking about. One of the issues that's being raised is about the perception of double standards that this attack is getting so much attention, which it certainly is, compared to other attacks. Um, the day before the Paris attacks, there was a bombing in Beirut, also by Islamic State. Um, at least 43 were killed there. That was a major terrorist incident. And it's true that got relatively minor coverage by comparison. Um, my own theory on this is that the Syrian civil war has already spread into Lebanon. This isn't the first such violent incident in Lebanon. And that's not to trivialize it, that's not to downplay it. But that is my guess as to why it hasn't really got the attention. Also, Beirut, in all honesty, has always been a byword for being a volatile city. Um, it has made significant efforts to stabilize since the Lebanese civil war, but you know, it's only it's only a few decades ago that Beirut was itself a war zone. Suspect that's sort of the other reason. Um, for right or wrong, that's what I suspect the reason is. I'm not justifying that, I'm just saying that's probably the reason. Um, a few people have also been talking about Kenya in reference to the Garissa attacks, um, which were actually the worst terrorist attacks this year in terms of death toll, um, outside war zones that is. 152 students and staff killed in the Garissa University attacks was in July by Al-Shabaab. Um, but once again, that's an example of the ugly face of uh, Islamism. Um, may not have been Islamic State, but Al-Shabaab is uh, also a pretty ruthless group. And they have carried out a lot of attacks in Kenya. This is the worst so far. Um, but, you know, I've even seen a, a Kenyan friend of mine. She even had the, the French flag that a lot of people are putting on the profile. And she was taking a very sort of open-minded approach to it saying that, of course, she prays for Kenya, but she prays for France as well. Actually, prayer and secularism is another issue I want to mention in relation to that. Um, I've seen I've seen a meme going around. I think it's from Charlie Hebdo, it sort of says in French. Uh, I've seen the translation. Um, Dear international friends, thank you for your prayers for Paris. But we what we want is to stand up to religious extremism, something along those lines. Um, that's kind of a statement of French secularism, which of course is quite well known. Um, I think one thing that unites France is that people, whether they be of left wing or right wing persuasion, tend to be united by an opposition to religious theocracy. That is something I've noticed from the French not to generalize, but it is something that I have noticed. And in my view, that is a good thing, a very good thing. Um, in the deal about atheism, I mentioned that um, I wouldn't be in support of militant atheism, i.e. silencing religious people. Nevertheless, I think France has a progressive attitude in so far as enforcing secularism. Um, that doesn't mean that French Muslims, French Christians and French Jews can't worship in their their places of faith because they can and to make any sort of comparison between the french attitude to secularism and the theocratic attitude in countries like saudi arabia or iran would be totally erroneous because in saudi arabia especially there is absolutely no tolerance of any other views in fact 
the Saudi regime has just made it, they've just designated atheism to be terrorism. And we still do trade with this pathetic regime. And France especially should be reviewing their, their connections to the Saudi regime. Um, that's something that I've always had concerns about. And I think this, the events this week just continue to highlight that. Um, uh, I, I just, uh, about a few hours ago, I heard an interview on BBC Radio on YouTube, um, and it was a guy from South Shields who had been in the Bataclan theatre with his girlfriend. He protected his girlfriend um, like any decent man would do. Um, he was quite shaken up in the interview, but it's pretty interesting to listen to his views on that. Um, I'll put a link on this video, and to me, the interview is quite thought provoking because the guy says at one point that he always saw himself as on the left, socialist, liberal, but he believes ISIS should be wiped off the face of the earth. There's something about terrorism that really, especially I think for people directly involved in it, that really does create black and white sentiments insofar as you can philosophize all you want and you can try to explain the root causes of terrorism but there is there is an absolutism uh, insofar as when faced with that sort of barbarity against civilians and this is the thing that needs to be emphasized over and over and over again um i don't think there can really be any sort of um moral understanding of what these people do and i think attempts to try and produce a moral argument for them in my view is totally wrong uh, i'm not even talking about people openly supporting them but people who try to suggest that we should even compromise with them um i believe that in extreme times then sometimes an extreme tolerant attitude or an extreme liberal attitude just looks downright foolish um so how do we deal with islamic state regarding the syrian civil war and regarding you know the causes of it people can argue that all day i happen to believe that it was assad's brute, brute crushing of the scent that um Cause a civil war, and I believe that Islamic State took advantage of it. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the narrative today is that it's Assad versus Islamic State. Well, that only happened sort of 2012 onwards. People forget this civil war began in 2010. But anyway, I'm not going to get into that because that's my views on it, and I do think there's been a lot of distortion out there. But you know, I think Assad is just as bad as Islamic State, and I think his regime is responsible for at least as many civilian deaths, if not a lot more. Uh, I mean, the Assad regime is a terrorist regime. There's no question about that. They've deliberately terrorized and tortured civilians since the start of this war. Um, I reckon if you ask the average Syrian, they would regard ISIS and Assad in equal contempt. At least that's my experience of the Syrians I've met. Um, here, of course, there'll be regime supporters, but you get that in every dictatorship. Anyway, uh, without going off on, you know, I don't want to get in great detail about the complexities of the Syrian civil war, but I think one thing that everyone would agree with is that Islamic State needs to be confronted. Um, now, what's the best way to confront them remains very hard to answer. Um, I do think we need to have some sort of consensus with Russia. And I don't say that lightly because I'm very critical of some of Russia's actions over the last few years. Um, certainly their bombing campaigns in Syria, um, there are question marks about what the real agenda is there, if it's taking on ISIS or is it just trying to bolster the Assad regime. Regardless um, of what we think of Russia, and by we, I'm talking about Western governments. 
because I'm, you know, my politics is broadly in support of taking on ISIS. Um, regardless of what we think of Russia, and it works both ways, regardless of what Russia thinks of the West, it's time for the finger pointing to end and for great powers to work together. I say great powers because Syria is obviously a failed state. It's not going to be able to sort out its own mess. Um, it's going to come down to powers like Russia, France, the United Kingdom, the United States to work together. Um, and in some faction, in some, in some way, Iran and Saudi Arabia are going to have to be involved because they're the two countries where this proxy war between Shia and Sunni is playing out. Um, so all these powers are going to have to be involved in some way. Turkey and Egypt are would add to that as well. But, you know, who would want to be the sort of chairperson of that meeting? Because you have a situation where all the great powers are blaming each other. Um, and the truth is, I reckon, the fairest assessment is that all the great powers are partly culpable for this. I do reject this idea that you could blame the West for everything. And I will stand by that view because some people are saying, oh, the West funds ISIS, the West is responsible for all of this. I don't accept that because Russia has been funding the Assad regime from the very start of the war. That sure as hell hasn't helped matters. Um, but like I say, now is the time for the finger pointing to end and for there to be some sort of consensus. Um, the West is going to have to also concede some ground. If that means a situation where Assad runs for president again, then so be it. But, you know, the Syrians have to have a voice as well, their country. And the problem is the opposition is never going to want a situation where Assad can rerun as president. Um, I think the problem is trying to organize an election in a war zone is always going to be a challenge. So even if an election goes ahead, getting that to be free and fair is going to be hugely problematic. And that is essential because if it's not free and fair, that's just going to prolong the civil war. Um, so there are no easy answers in that regard. It may well be that the only way for this war to end is for Assad to remain in power. And I think that would be very tragic because this is a man who's killed thousands of his own people. I don't think anyone can honestly dispute that unless you're brainwashed by Russia today, but that's my personal opinions coming into it. Um, I think that um, I think that in terms of taking on ISIS, uh, there has been some on the political left who have said it's better, and I know some victims of the hostages have said this as well. well and you know, I, I want to be hugely sensitive to their views because they've been through something most of us can't imagine. Um, however, when people say that uh, the likes of Jihadi John should have been arrested and put to trial for his crimes, and there's been some Islamic groups have also said he should be tried as a war criminal. My question is, well, how do you propose to do that? The only way to do that is for ground forces to move in and arrest him. Now, to me, that's frankly a little bit naive because this is the middle of a war zone. How on earth do you arrest, arrest the militant in a war zone? Um, I think that's just naive. But let's say for the argument that you can do that, that you can take him in, send him to the Hague, tried as a war criminal. Let's just say for the sake of argument that happens. What is to say that uh, he won't use in the months of legal wrangling as propaganda in order to recruit more people, in order to make himself out to be a martyr? Because he would then be allowed to stand trial in the Hague. He would have a platform. And there's a very real chance he would just use it to try and you know, convince young Muslims that he is a martyr. That is the danger. Um, I will say one thing, though. I think Sky News was absolutely crass in describing Jeremy Corbyn as jihad Jeremy. That was disgraceful. There were 17,000 
complaints against that, and um, I agree agree with those complaints. Um, whatever you think of Jeremy Corbyn's politics, to compare a democratically elected British politician to a bloodthirsty Islamist terrorist is absurd. Um, I mean, I don't particularly agree with Jeremy Corbyn's approach because what I've just said, I don't think it's realistic to suggest that you could just arrest this guy. But it's worth noting that Jeremy Corbyn said it appears he's been held to account. So Jeremy Corbyn wasn't directly condemning the killing. Uh, there were other left-wing sources that were, uh, such as the Morning Star, which is a paper I have no respect for. I believe it's far-left nonsense. Um, but there you go. Uh, so yeah, I, I just don't know how people propose. You know, if you're opposed to the targeted killing of Islamist terrorists, my question is, what what alternative do you suggest? Arresting them? How? The only way to do that is to send in ground forces, or to leave it to the Syrians. Um, and you know, it may well be that a lot of the Islamists are going to be killed in the battles with the Syrian government anyway. So, you know, either way, they're going to die. Whether it be being killed by the Syrian forces, being killed by airstrikes from Russia, France, or the United States, possibly Britain, if this vote goes ahead in Parliament, um, or they'll kill themselves in a suicide attack. So, you know, these men live by the sword, they're going to die by the sword. That's the way I, I view it. Um, and I do believe we're dealing with pure evil when we're talking about ISIS. So, you know, I, I don't think there's any compromise with an organization like this. People who naively think that you can have some sort of ceasefire with the likes of ISIS need to then recognize that would mean compromising with their ideology, compromising and allowing them to enslave women um, brutally execute homosexuals, um, forcibly convert people who don't subscribe to the warped ideology. And I'm not just talking about non-Muslims. I'm talking about any Muslims they deem as apostates. This is a fascist totalitarian ideology. I think the only way to deal with it is to eradicate the leaders. Now, is that going to stop the problem of ISIS? Not in the short run. But I do think it will be a morale blow to them. I do believe that by taking out, for example, Jihadi John, it does damage their propaganda because it means that, you know, they're going to have organizational problems. So I do think it will weaken them. It won't stop them, but I do think it will weaken them. And in the time being, I think that is the only logical approach there is. I mean... I would honestly compel those who are arguing for compromise to think very carefully about what they are saying and to then ponder themselves, how would they do it? If they were a world leader, how would they go about doing that? I don't think any government, any individual or any group should cave in to the demands of ISIS. I think that is something that most people can agree on. Um, so that's basically my thoughts at, at present. Um, as for the threat devil, um, we know what the threat is, it's radical Islamism, but as for the actual chances of there being another attack, I, I do think the chances are very high. I don't think that's scaremongering. I think it's just being realistic. Given the number of jihadists that are in France and the United Kingdom, in fact, there was a guy arrested in my city. And, you know, I come from a relatively small city. Um, I think there's a very real chance of there being another attempted attack. I remember back in the 2000s, there was the Madrid bombing. Then there was a London attack uh, just over a year afterwards. So based on that trend, if it goes along the same way, then... I would say the next big attack will be about a year from now. You know, I don't want to make any sort of morbid predictions, but I think that would be sort of a rational outlook on the situation. I think Germany could face itself under threat. 
because the sheer number of people that they're letting in, and this is not an attack on refugees, because the vast majority of refugees, I believe, are who they say they are. But when you have so many people, I think Merkel is being a little bit reckless in the sheer volume that she is letting in. Um, it is inevitable that there's going to be some bad apples. So Germany is going to have to be very, very careful with this. So is every country in Europe. I mean, France has been particularly under the feigned attack this year, but the truth is no Western country is safe. No country is safe for that matter. And this is a geopolitical problem. I do believe that it is going to spread to other countries. It's being seen in Africa, in Nigeria and Kenya. You know, uh, and I know Al-Shabaab isn't ISIS, but it's the same ideology. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if India finds itself targeted. I wouldn't be surprised even if China finds itself targeted. Because all it will take is ISIS for trying to make, you know, to issue a jihad to do with the Xinjiang conflict. And then there's a chance that Beijing will find itself under threat. I believe this is a worldwide problem. I don't think it's just a European problem. I believe it is a worldwide problem. And it is only a matter of time before there's another major attack somewhere. Um, it is important to put things in context. The chances of being killed in a terrorist attack are very, 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 very low. Um, we'll have to remember that 132 people were killed, but you know, Greater Paris has 12 million people. So 132 out of 12 million, that puts it into context. Also, we can't overlook the fact that hundreds are killed in Syria every single day. That is true. Anyway, that's a few of my thoughts. Uh, sorry for talking at length here, but I do believe there's a lot of issues to cover. Um, let me know your thoughts. Um, any comments slandering me uh, to be something that I'm not, I will delete because I'm not going to tolerate that. I am going to allow different views, um, but I'm not going to tolerate any sort of lies against myself. That has unfortunately happened in one or two of my videos, and I don't see why I should tolerate it. Is I've tried very hard to be objective and clear in what I'm saying in these videos. And if people misunderstand that, that's their fault. Thanks for watching.